Hey, welcome back to the channel, my fellow weather junkies. I'm your host, Greg Majeski, your personal weatherman here, bringing you the weather without all that social media hype here on your Friday, November 29th, 2024. Let's go ahead and talk about what we're tracking here for today. Of course, we we're in the long Thanksgiving Day weekend. A lot of folks will be heading home on Sunday, so we'll take a look at that Sunday travel day forecast ahead. We're going to talk about the potential for some record-breaking snows across the Great Lakes, and I'm going to try to explain why we're expecting that. A little unusual to see what we're going to be setting up across that region. And then we're going to talk about any potential pattern shift. So we get some indications, maybe we might see some changes as we head deeper into the month of December. Now, before we get into all this, first, I want to ex extend my personal thank you out there to the 10 new subscribers here to the channel. And if you haven't yet subscribed, if you're that 50% out there who haven't just yet, please help me out. Why don't you go hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you're learning on future content. And as always, please leave a comment, give me a thumbs up. It does help with that YouTube algorithm as we continue to try to grow the best channel possible out there in the YouTube universe for you guys. All right. Let's go ahead and take a look right now at our latest satellite imagery here on your Friday as we've got a little bit of light rain here across the deep south, a little disturbance here right along the jet stream here. It's still seeing that uh, big swirl here as we're getting that cold air across the Great Lakes. That's just starting to get underway out there and uh, really not looking too bad here for most of the country as uh, the pattern is pretty quiet out there except for the Great Lakes. We're starting to see those winter storm warnings and advisories start to come on out and these are really going to pick up here over the days ahead. Now across the deep south, you notice all this is all out of your uh, uh, freeze warnings and freeze watches out here across the deep south. Many areas getting their first freezes of the season. A little bit late to see this as we're getting closer to begin, obviously, the month of December. But that's about it out here from coast to coast. All right, let's look at your airport delays here for this morning. Not bad. Again, areas, any of the, any of the locations around near the Great Lakes need to watch out, like Cleveland, for example, maybe need to watch out for some potential delays there because of the lake effect snow machines. But most of the travel here for all the major hubs looking pretty good here as we're going into this upcoming weekend. So some good news there. Uh, let's look at your surface map right now. Again, we've got some of that rain along the Gulf Coast. Could see a few rumbles of thunder there across portions of Florida here for today. <clears throat> but again, we're just kind of getting the snow machine going here across the Great Lakes uh, just for the simple fact that we've got some very cold air. Look at these temperatures here below zero and into the single digits. And this is uh, driving across those warmer waters of the Great Lakes. This is the current temperature readings. In fact, a lot of the Great Lakes have been running above normal. They're running record breaking over the summer. And even down here in Lake Erie, I just wanted to highlight they're showing water temperature still in the mid 50s, which is very unusual, very warm. Now, keep in mind, here's the thing. The warmer the water, the higher the water vapor content is for that cold air that's blowing over the top of that. So that means there's a lot more moisture to pull from, which means we're going to get a lot of uh, big snow totals on the downwind side of the leeward side of these lakes uh, because these water temperatures are so warm. So, And the fact we're expecting an extended uh, uh, prolonged event here. So we're just kind of getting the snows here starting here near Erie going over toward Jamestown. This is south of the Buffalo area. It'll be interesting to see the Buffalo Bills are playing at home on Sunday to see what their game looks like as they could be looking at some snowy weather there as well. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the latest from the Storms Prediction Center here as we're going to be looking here Again, just a general thunderstorm threat here across uh, areas of Florida. So Florida, you know, right near to Louisiana, that little disturbance that's going through here on your Friday. So that's about it. No real organized severe weather expected, not only for today, but also for the next three days. So nothing going on going into this upcoming weekend. And because of the lack of storm systems, obviously, we don't have to worry about any excessive rain or any flooding events going on. Now, as far as the hazards outlook is concerned, as we take a look at that, again, we do got a couple things we're going to talk about. Obviously, you saw all those warnings here across the south. So we got freezing conditions here across the, the, the Gulf Coast states. They're got kind of getting their first cold weather of the season with a, a below temperatures of 32 degrees. And then the Great Lakes, obviously, are going to be center stage here for really days on end as they could be looking at some significant snows uh, really piling up in the feet uh, in those locations as we go into the next, uh, going into the basically the first week of December. So let's go ahead and talk about the short term forecast here as we're looking at the high resolution model. We're going to be kind of taking this out here, uh, taking this to about midnight here on your, on your Saturday night going into Sunday. And the one thing you're going to notice here is that, again, we're going to move some of this rain here across the day. Uh, across Florida. This is going to be our wet zone here for today uh, down there. We've got the lake effect machine kicking off uh, through this region. One thing's for sure through this model run is you notice this freezing line, which is way down here to the south. 
this is really not going to change all that much, folks, is that uh, cold air is just going to kind of sit there. So no major changes here as I go ahead and take this on through here, uh, through its 48-hour uh, run here, uh, just seeing that plain old cold air uh, coming on in. So anybody traveling on Saturday outside of those lake effect zones around the Great Lakes, no travel headaches expected there, and I think that trend will continue into Sunday as well. Now let's talk about that jet stream. Of course, that's that river air that drives those storm systems across the country, okay? So we're looking for the, the peaks and the valleys and the ridges and things like that uh, that kind of drive these systems. One thing you could clearly see as we've got this, uh, basically this big low pressure system here uh, kind of spinning about, and we're just kind of diving in this big strong trough here across the east uh, that's keeping that cold air in place. And it's that, that feature that's gonna drive that lake effect machine, just keep it on there as that trough even gets even more pronounced as we go into the early portion of next week. This is going in toward your Monday, uh, looking uh, very cold across the east. We'll start to modify the temperatures here a little bit out in the west. We're getting a little bit of ridging going on out there. <clears throat> so that'll be uh, equal to some milder temperatures there. But what we're gonna see is these repeated little shots that are gonna continue to come down. Here's our next little energy shift here. Kind of watch this as this kind of dips down in here as well. So we'll get another little uh, system, a little Alberta clipper system that will be kind of moisture star, but it will re-enhance that heavy snow threat uh, again across the Great Lakes as we head toward Tuesday and Wednesday. Here's the shot coming on down right through there. Uh, again, kind of hooking up here across the Midwest. So we'll be coming through uh, the Great Lakes. Got a little upper level feature here across Southern California, but no real rain with that one. Uh, as that kind of moves on in there and just kind of dips down into off the the, uh, the Baja California there area, area down there. But we're continuing with that dangum trough just sitting there across the east. And boy, they're seeing the big ridging here uh, taking place here across the west. Got that cutoff feature down here, which will eventually eject on out, uh, may bring in some light rain across the south. But otherwise, that's about it. So this big trough hits in place. And then we get another shot coming down. Here's another one coming down as we head toward the tent. So again, repeatedly, one after another after another. Now, I mentioned at the beginning of the show, I said maybe a potential pattern shift. Let's take this all the way out from the tent past the 11th to the 12th. We start seeing a little bit of a change here. As Watch this it, part of the jet stream here starts to dip down here into the south. So what that means, we start shifting the cold air, maybe starts to shift back toward the west here. So as I go ahead and take this all the way on out, uh, you notice that we start seeing some changes. Okay, so the jet stream starts to change to this configuration here. And here's this is the subtropical here. So that means we should see things begin to moderate here across the east if this holds true. Again, this is a long range projection. What I'm going to be looking for now as we go with the next couple of days is to see does this look like a pattern shift? Does this look like we're going to see that we're looking for that model consistency? So that's what we're going to be looking at as it, you know, this is long range out. And we'll, we'll see if that changes as we head toward the middle of the month. Makes sense it would. Typically, it's about three weeks when you see a pattern shift, okay? So let's talk about, the again, the precipitation here as we go ahead and take you through again. Uh, going into Sunday. So let's go into Sunday right here. Sunday morning, again, looking very good. You have any travel plans uh, from across the continental United States, you're looking pretty good, except for those hot zones, again, across the Great Lakes, where, like Buffalo and areas that are on there that may see some uh, Erie and getting into Pennsylvania, Jamestown. Those typical lake effect zones are going to be a little, little hot and heavy there. But again, travel on Sunday looking very good. If you're on the cars or are you traveling by air, should not see any big problems there. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at that week ahead. Again, that blue there staying very far south. We're going into Tuesday morning here, and I'll go ahead and freeze it right there. You're still looking at, again, that cold line sitting right through there. So, again, very chilly weather here across the east. We're moderating things here across the west. A little rainy here across Texas. Uh, a little bit of that uh, upper little energy kind of ejecting on out there into Texas there a little bit. And it looks like that'll track along the Gulf Coast, maybe a little bit into Louisiana. There's this Alberta Clipper system coming into Wednesday. Boom, here it comes right through there, as you can see it right through the Great Lakes uh, going into Wednesday morning. So this will enhance the snow machine that's in, in place, and we'll go ahead and, and continue with its snowy weather there across the Great Lakes. Again, I'm, I'm thinking we could see some record-breaking snows here because of how warm that water temperature is and the fact of just how prolonged we're going to continue with those winds blowing over those warmer waters for such a long period of time. And as we go into the following weekend, uh, the weekend after Thanksgiving weekend, obviously, we're still looking at a cold pattern staying in place. We're going to stay chilly here in the east, milder here in the west, a little rainy here across uh, portions of Texas. Here's an upper level feature down here across uh, off the Baja California area I was, I was talking about earlier. Uh, that will eventually start to kick on in. You notice here coming into Texas, boom, 
uh, as we go into the following weekend. Uh, that may bring in some rains as we go in toward Texas and into Oklahoma and Arkansas as we go out toward uh, going into the following weekend. So we're talking about the 8th and into the 9th. And this moves on out as yet another shot comes on down as we head toward the 11th of December. And then finally, as we take this all the way out again, we're waiting to see if we're going to get that pattern. Notice the blue. We, we've been staying away from the blue here out in the west, but you're going to notice this start to dip down here toward the, toward the south here as that cold air starts to trench down into the, into the west. There it comes. Boom. Coming on down there a little bit. And it looks like we're st we'll start to see the first indications of that potential pattern shift maybe as we head toward the middle of the month. We got, we got again, we're looking for trends here. We're going to be looking at uh, tomorrow and the next day. We'll see if that uh, continues to hold true or not. But for right now, at least short term, the next 10 days, it's going to stay pretty much uh, on the chilly side in the east. 10-day precipitation totals again as we've got a couple of disturbances here. A little wetter here across uh, the Texas Gulf Coast area. That's probably the west part of the country outside of the Great Lakes, which are really going to be dumping a tremendous amount of snow there. But really from coast to coast, uh, still showing that indication straight through the 8th of December. The next 10 days, limited precipitation for most of the country, especially areas here in the west. I got nothing out here for you out there from California back to Colorado. No more snow is coming right now. Uh, things pretty quiet out there for the next 10 days. Snow totals, let's look at those totals here across the Great Lakes. Again, this is a 10-day total. I don't like going beyond about 10 days, but still showing 45, 30 inches. I'm still seeing 24, 31 inches up here. Here's 30 inches up here. Uh, uh, looking at uh, showing up to 64 inches up here. Uh, so it is quite dramatic. And again, I do believe the models tend to underestimate these snow totals here over the next 10 days, and it may even go beyond the next 10 days. So again, record-breaking snows, I think, are definitely uh, possible for just about all of the, of the leeward side of the lakes for all the lake locations, especially for Ontario and Lake Erie, as those two lakes are the warmest lakes uh, that, that, of course, means the higher snow uh, and water content availability there for that cold air blowing over those Great Lakes. All right, let's talk about temperatures here. We're again, we're going to talk about the change here. Let me back this up. I forgot to reset this for you. So let me go ahead and show you this again as we're continuing to see that cold, cold trend. And you'll start on your, on here on your Friday, most of the country is looking at uh, temperatures uh, at or below average here for the most part. But we're going to start seeing things begin to change, especially out in the West. You're going to notice a little more reds out there as we progress here in, uh, through the weekend and into early next week. We continue to see that trend here where we're going to see things begin to moderate a little bit out here as we go through the day on Monday, but still staying pretty chilly here across the eastern half of the United States uh, going into the new work week. So as you go ahead and go forward here again, we're going to continue to watch those, uh, those trends. Remember, we got that clipper system that's going to come across. Here it goes, boom, coming in to go Wednesday and Thursday. So we're going to blow in some uh, cold air back over those Great Lakes, reinforcing shot here across the eastern half of the United States going into the following weekend. Uh, if you, again, we're going to see temperatures running above average here in the West compared to normal. Wouldn't call it warm, but we'll just call it above average for this time of year. Uh, continue out there in the West and uh, continue that trend. And then we get another shot here. Here comes another one going toward the 10th and 11th uh, coming here across the east. It'll be after the 11th where we might see some changes start to take place here out into the west. So I'll take this all the way out here a little bit. And there we go. You notice how we start to cool things down here in the west. And looks like we see temperatures begin to respond to above normal here in the eastern third if the true pattern change is coming at us. That's the that's going to be the key, and uh, we'll be watching very closely to see if that's going to actually come to uh, fruition or not. So let's go ahead and talk about the climate outlook, the latest from the Climate Center here. Let's talk about this. This is the 6 to 10 day outlook. No major changes here. I don't expect any changes here when this gets updated here later today. Uh, 4, to 8, uh, 4 through the 8th of December, St. Chile in the east, milder in the west. And this holds true here going out through December 6th to the 12th. Again, kind of cooler, especially across the northeast, warmer in here in the west. Now, beyond the 12th, again, the update today, we might start seeing some changes up into this zone or coming in here. If we get that true pattern flip, we'll see this will flip over as we head toward the, the middle of the month. So we'll see how it works out. Precipitation wise, again, we're staying very dry west coast. I mean, obviously you saw that big bullseye of nothing here across this region. That's looking uh, very true here going out from December 4th through the 8th. So very dry here, a little more active long, long up there across the Canadian border. And of course, Texas, we saw how, uh, several rounds of rain coming down there as we go into the month of December. And then going deeper here from the days 8th through the 14th, to December 6th through the 12th, 
starting to see some slight moderation, but still very dry out here in the West. Uh, again, I believe this pattern change will begin to change a little bit as we head toward uh, the middle of the month and maybe the precipitation starts to come back a little bit here for folks out toward the West and most of the East, eh, either near normal or just a little bit below normal there in the, the middle portion of the country. So uh, again, we're looking at some uh, very cold frigid temperatures here across a lot of the Eastern half of the United States, the Great Lakes. Uh, again, some of the imagery we're gonna start seeing coming out of this, I think may be quite impressive. Uh, and the, all the ingredients are there. We got, uh, we got relatively warm waters for this time of year. I mean, water temperatures in the 50s with that kind of cold air when you got single digits there uh, coming across those Great Lakes, you're gonna pick up a lot of water content there and you're just gonna dump it on the leeward side down, down wind here uh, from those lakes. So record breaking snows, I think are definitely in the cards there. And we'll see if we get that pattern shift a little bit later. We need it. Uh, obviously we've got some very dry weather across most of the country and we really need to get the, the jet stream pattern to bring those storm systems across the nation. Uh, so we can kind of beat out some of those uh, drought conditions that we're currently seeing across a big portion of the country right now. All right, that's your latest update. If you appreciate these updates and you like to get these in your YouTube feed, all you gotta do is please hit that subscribe button so you get and hit that notification bell so you're alerted when I update these, these weather dailies that I try to do every day as best I can. And also do weather features and shorts and things like that. I do appreciate you guys supporting the channel. So please hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you learn on future content. And as always, leave me a comment down below if you appreciate this and give me a thumbs up. All right, that's your update for now. You guys take it easy, be good, stay safe, and we'll see you next time. Bye, guys.